So where are you guys from? Sorry, we're based out of uh, based out of Colorado Springs. Colorado, okay, gotcha. Yep, yep. Uh, are you? Kyle, Oops. Sorry, Kyle, you are good to go. All right, awesome, cool. All right, welcome, 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 everybody, to yet another episode of the Blind Spot where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence. I am your host, Kyle Kuhn, your United States Association of Blind Athletes Program and Safe Sport Coordinator. Just a few little housekeeping items before we uh, introduce our incredible guest today. Guys, just make sure to uh, be tuned in to you know, those social media feeds, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everything we've got some amazing content and stuff coming out over the next few weeks uh that we're really excited to to share with you um you know as always uh reminding you guys that usaba we are celebrating our 45th year of existence wow 45 years of uh you know trying to make sure that every american that's blind vision impaired is uh is out there living a healthy active lifestyle through sport and recreational and physical activity. Um, you know, just again, we're going to be uh, putting out a lot more content uh, to celebrate that 45th anniversary, um, especially in the build up to the Paralympics later this year. And that is a great segue into introducing uh, our next guest on the blind spot. Uh, you guys, I am pretty pumped to introduce you to Isaac Jean-Paul. He is a uh, Paralympic hopeful um, and uh, multi-time uh, world championship medalist in track and field. So Isaac, welcome to the blind spot, man. How's it going today? Man, it's going great, man. I, I absolutely thank you for having me on your uh, show, man. Super excited. Absolutely. So I, Isaac, just, uh, you know, just some, some basic stuff. Why don't, why don't you tell us just a little bit about uh, your eye condition and, and um, you know, how you, how you found your way to, to track and field? Oh, man, that's, man, you got time because this is a long story, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll try, I'll try to uh, be as short and precise as I can be. For but, sure. Um, at the age of two, I was diagnosed with juvenile retinoschisis, which is an eye condition um, where the retinas have cracks in some type of detachment um, from the eye to the brain. So mm -hmm. what that happens is it limits my peripheral vision, my central vision, nearsighted vision, farsighted vision. Everything um, is pretty much, I would like to say, jacked up, for <laughs> lack of better word. <laughs> yep. Um, but it didn't stop me, you know, from pursuing athletics. I mean, in fact, my eye doctors, as soon as they diagnosed me with juvenile retinoschisis, they told my parents to allow me to experience life to its fullest. Um, don't try to hold his hand through this process. Allow Isaac to navigate the world through his own lens. Yep. And that's what my parents did. You know what I'm saying? They allowed me to understand um, my, my eye condition and how to adapt to it. And um, in school, it was pretty tough. You know, um, I had the large and text, large and large textbooks, you know, the, the, the textbooks that take over like half the table and all of that. I had the CCTVs and all that good stuff just to help me see. Oh. And in oh, the yeah. midst of yeah, you, you can relate, right? You, oh, yeah, man. I, I, uh, I know the feeling. <laughs> yes, sir. So, you know, and, and I bet you even know the feeling that, you know, being young, kids want to know what that was. So, oh, yeah. you know, I began to feel more of a more of a spectacle than a peer, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because people will always want to, you know, use my devices. And I'm like, man, I, I don't even feel comfortable using these devices. And, um, with that being said, I kind of like gravitated away from school a lot. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I just didn't like school because I was getting too much unwanted attention. Um, but in sports, 
that's where I found myself to be just like everyone else. You know, it's um, people didn't see me um, having a disability because when you look at me, you'd be like, oh, he's just another guy that wears glasses, especially yeah. how I n navigate the world. You know, I, you would never know that I have a disability until I tell you. So mm -hmm. in sports, I was able to hide it even more because I was so good. And I would play every sport imaginable from football, basketball. And I mean, those are the only two sports I really did play. Those are the only two sports I really enjoyed playing. But I was really good at baseball, but my mom would never let me play baseball because she was too fearful of me getting hit in the head with the ball or, you know, just, you know, she was protective on the certain sports. She was okay with me playing basketball because it was just like, all right, you can move around and do things. Um, nope. She almost didn't let me play football, so I had to, like, show her that I was good enough to play football. Okay. And eventually, I was good enough, and then they let me put the pads on, and they were like, all right. And I was really good at that. So, like, mm -hmm. that was that was a point – that was a place where I found refuge. You know, I found to be the most comfortable. I found myself being just like everyone else. My vision didn't matter, even though it did matter. But – it didn't matter because I just was so good. Um, growing up, basketball was my love. Like, I, I wanted to be in the NBA. I wanted to be dunking on LeBron James, crossing over Kobe, and doing all that good stuff, you know? Because my mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know? My oh, mom, yeah, she, man. She was a, a basketball player. In fact, my whole mom's side of our family, my family are basketball players. That's one sport that we just grew up playing was basketball. So I, I took that tradition and I ran with it. I made my freshman year uh, in high school basketball team. And right then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to the NBA. I made my freshman year high school team. NBA, here I come. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. Nah, yeah. hey, way, to, way to take the bull by the horns there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I made it my freshman team, probably one of the most proudest moments of my life. And at this point, I'm still like gravitating more and more away from school because now sports are becoming my forefront, you mm -hmm. know, and I was so fixated on my sport. And um, sophomore year, I end up getting cut. And I'm like, how did I get cut from the basketball team? This is what I do. Like, and I asked the coach, like, hey, coach, what do I have to work on to be better for next year so I can make the team? You know, it was the toughest, you know, feeling of my life to ask him what I had to work on because I'm like sad I didn't make the team. And I felt mm -hmm. like I deserved to have a spot on the team. But mm -hmm. I took it as if like, OK, maybe I need to work a little bit harder. So he said he he wouldn't look me in my eyes, but he would say he would say, "Oh, you got to work on your handles." So all mm -hmm. summer, that's all I did. I worked on my handles. I would wake up at like five. It would be nice that I wouldn't even sleep. You know, mm -hmm. I would wake up, or I would stay up until the sun comes out and be outside playing basketball. Worked on my handles, and I was like, you know what? There's no way I'm not gonna make this team my junior year. Mm -hmm. I go to tryouts. I get cut again. And I'm like, OK, at this point, I'm kind of confused because I know I'm better than that guy. I'm better than that guy. I'm better than that guy. And then at the same time, there's people from the team that made the team asking me if I made the team and how come I'm not on the team. And I couldn't I didn't know why I wasn't on the team. I had no no answer for him. And then I would ask the coach, like, hey, is there anything I need to work on to be better my senior year so I can make the team? I have to make the team my senior year. Right. It was like, you're just too small. Like, you need to grow some, add a little bit more muscle. And that's what I did. You know, I, I was reading this article about, uh, not Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. Yep. And he was he would say uh, the time that he got cut from the basketball team, they were t telling him that he was too short. His mom would tell him, put salt in your shoes and you will grow some. And so that's what he did. And from one summer, he grew from like being five, eight to six foot three over one summer. So I was like, hey, if it worked for him, it could work for me. <laughs> so I'm putting the salt in the shoes. My mom's looking at me like, what are you doing? What are you doing with my table salt? And I'm like, I'm trying to grow. You know, I'm trying to do anything and everything yep. to make sure that I make this team my senior year. Yep. I go to tryouts and in the midst of tryouts, they cut. They didn't cut people, but they split the teams up. So you can make you can kind of come up with like who's going to be on a team and who's not 
during yep. the middle of tryouts and whatever. Mm-hmm. And we were doing this one drill. And I was just like, you know what? If I don't make this team, I'm at least going to go out there and try my hardest. And it was this one-on-one drill where the defender has to roll the ball out to you at the three-point line. And I'm, I'm the offensive player. So the defender rolls the ball out to you. And you guys, and the, off, the offensive player only has two dribbles. Within those two dribbles, you gotta you gotta score. You can't take no more than two dribbles. So I was just like, you know what? I know I can jump, and I know I'm fast. If I can get my first step in front of this guy, I know I can almost dunk on him. So that's what I did. So I literally went, and nobody was expecting this. They nobody knew at this point that I was like I can jump. I didn't even know I was like a jumper at this point. I was just super athletic. So I took the ball right down the middle of the lane and I rose up and like almost dunked on him. I missed it. My hands were too small at the, at the time. So I couldn't palm the ball, but I almost dunked on him and the coaches and like everybody just looked at me and I was just like, damn, I missed, you know, I'm thinking (laughs) I missed, you know, but everybody did all because I almost dunked on this guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the end of tryouts happened. I get my letter and I open that letter and I'm thinking like I made the team. I had to have made the team after that play. And then the letter reads, I'm sorry, but we decide to go a different direction. And oh. I get cut again. And I'm just like, at this point, the NBA is looking this small. You know, freshman oh. year, it looked this big, but now oh. it's like small. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, all right, man, what am I going to do? Like, no colleges is going to pick up me, and I can't even make my high school basketball team. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. So one day in the middle of skipping class, because, again, you know, I didn't like going to school. I was yep. just one of those people that just showed up to school for PE class mm-hmm. <laughs> and skipped every other class. Yep. I don't condone it, but, you know, I eventually found the importance behind having a great education. So Absolutely. I, that comes in later down the road in the story. So yeah. I'm, I'm skipping class one day and I'm sitting at my friend's house and we're watching Devin Hester. And at the point, I'm from Chicago. So at this time, Devin Hester was the fastest man in the world. Like yep. Usain Bolt didn't matter because Usain, or Devin Hester was running how he was running for Chicago Bears, you know? And in this particular video, they had Devin Hester on one side and a cheetah on the other side. And they were, it was sports science. And they were literally calculating how fast Devin Hester was. And, you know, me being a competitor, I'm like, eh, Devin Hester ain't, you know, I'm faster yep. than Devin Hester. You know what I'm yep, saying? Yep, and yep. my friends are looking at me like, bro, you're crazy. You're not faster than Devin Hester. Like, you don't even run. I'm like, I don't have to run. I'm faster than Devin Hester. I just know. I just had that feeling in my heart that I was faster than For sure. And they were like, get out of here, bro. So I was like, you know what? If you get in your car and you drive 20 miles an hour, I bet you I can beat that car. My friend <laughs> looked at me. He was like, you're out of your mind. It's the it's in the middle of winter. You know, it's the middle of winter in Chicago and you want to go run a 20 mile hour fast car. You know what I'm saying? Like that's Mm -hmm. you're going to pull a hamstring and it's not going to look good. So my friend was like, I'm not about to go out there, let my car warm up just to see you not run as fast as you think you can run. (laughs) Have a better. I have a better bet for you. How about this? You try out for the track team. If you beat the fastest guy on the track team, then I would consider you fast. I was like, all right, bet taken. I don't really run track because, you know, it, you got to wear those small booty shorts and a little tank top. So I'm thinking, like, <laughs> this is far from what I'm used to. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. a, I'm a hooper, you know? Right. So what is what am I going to look like, you know, wearing these little small shorts and these little small shirts? But, you know, so I was like, you know what? I got to prove to my friends that I'm fast. Mm-hmm. So then the following week, track practice or track trials happen. And I'm determined, you know, I'm like, who's the fastest guy here? I'm eyeing everybody down, trying to figure out, like, who's fast. Now, mind you, you know, people already know who I am because I play basketball and, you know, I'm kind of popular. Uh, Mm -hmm. So people, like, knew of me. But they were like, okay, yo, you trying out for track? Cool. Today, that the first day of track tryouts was um, testing day. So we tested the broad jump. 
the vertical jump and the 40 yard dash. Now I was ready for the 40 yard dash. I was like, yeah, this, this is my time to see who's fast. But the first, the first uh, event was the broad jump. Now I wasn't familiar with the broad jump, but when they started to explain what the broad jump was, I was like, oh, that reminds me of me being a kid in the grocery store jumping mm -hmm. from different color tiles and not and pretending like the white tiles was lava. So I'm like, oh. okay, it's the same concept, right? Yep. So I see people jump. I'm like, all right, cool. One guy jumps pretty far. So I was now it's my turn. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna try to jump as far as I can. I woof my uh my arms back and I just thrust forward and I take the biggest leap of my life. And like everybody just stopped and looked at me as I as I landed. And I'm looking, I look where I started, and I'm just like, okay, cool. The coach looks at me, he pulls out the measuring tape. He was like, you just jumped 10 feet and like three inches. You know, the furthest jump that anybody's jumped wow. at track trials. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, cool. Like, all right. Now it's time for the vertical jump. Now everybody knows that, you know, I play, I have a basketball background. So like, oh, he's going to do good on the vertical jump, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I jumped like 32 inches and everybody looked at me like, damn, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let's see how fast he is. You know, he can show his yep. top. Let's see how fast he is. So yep. now this is my turn. I'm looking at everybody. I'm trying to figure out who's the fastest guy. And I'm watching everybody's response as each person goes. Mm -hmm. So the fastest guy on the track team at the time goes and everybody's like cheering for him. Like, let's go, let's go. And it's crazy because his name is Kyle. Shout out to Kyle <laughs> Ward, man. Shout out to Warren Blue Devils. You know, Warren Blue Devils, if it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't be here. Shout out to Rocco Odo, my track coach. Walter Alvarenga. Hey, I got to shout out all the track coaches, man. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> You're good, Warren man. Blue Devils, love you guys. Um, so Kyle Ward, he steps up. And he runs and everybody's like, wow, he just ran super fast. And, you know, I'm like, OK, you know, everybody's expecting him to run fast because he's the quote unquote fastest guy on the track team. And now yep. it's my turn. <laughs> and at this time, I'm wearing like basketball attire. I'm wearing the basketball shoes, baggy shorts, baggy shirt. <laughs> All I know is you just got to run. You got to run as if a pit bull is chasing you. So the coach says, ready, set. And I take off, go, and I'm just running. I don't even know how I look at this point. I'm just running as fast <laughs> as I can. I'm probably running crazy. And then, you know, the coach stops his uh, stopwatch, and he looks at the stopwatch. He looks at me. He looks at the stopwatch. He looks at me. And I'm looking like, all right, what's the time? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he was like, you just ran a four, five, eight, the fastest time that anybody's Ooh. running today. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I am fast, huh? He looked at me. He was like, look, if you don't continue to do track, I'm a choke you. Now, my track coach <laughs> at the time was this big, big football coach, you know, so yep. I'm, and I'm only like 125 pounds soaking wet. So, right. of course, I'm like, hey, whatever you want, boss, I got you. <laughs> and that's how my track career started. At this time, I still don't know anything about the Paralympics. That right. comes much later down the road. Like my my after college is when. I discovered the Paralympics. So this entire time I'm competing against able-bodied athletes, not thinking yep. anything of it, because again, I had dreams and aspirations of being an MBA. Um, and, and at that point, I still didn't know anything about the Paralympics. So um, eventually my high school career was pretty good. I ended up making, and this is my senior year. I started tracking mm -hmm. my senior year. Yep. I ended up making down the state, um, didn't do well but I was only like one of three other athletes that made it down to state from my, uh, from my high school. I okay. made it for the high jump and long jump. I okay. ended the year with a uh, six foot, six inches high jump, breaking the school record. Um, right. Long jump. I think I jumped 23 feet. Um, didn't break this. I don't think I have the school record for the long jump. But I was I was always loving the high jump because I didn't have to run so much. Like I stopped sprinting <laughs> just the high jump because I saw the high jumpers like laying on this big bed at this time at this at, after this workout that I was doing. It was like a ladder workout. I was okay. passed out on the ground and I just see this big fluffy bed and I see people jumping on it. And I look at one of my teammates as he's helping me up. I'm like, yo, what is that over there? 
And he was like, oh, that's the high jump. And I was like, so those people over there, they don't got to do what we just did? He was like, <laughs> no, they just jump. I was like, I want to do that. Coach. <laughs> I was like, hey, coach, I want to do this. And at the time, like, I was – I don't know if I was the best athlete, but the coaches allow me to be like, okay, well, shoot, we're going to try him in a high jump. You know, we yeah. seen him sprint, but let's see if he's good at jumps. Yeah. And that's where, you know, I found success in. And unfortunately, um, after one practice, my coach pulls me into the office. And at the time, I'm thinking I'm in trouble, you know, because every time right. someone tells me uh, I need to talk to you or meet me in my office, I'm thinking I'm going to get a detention or a pink slip or a Saturday school because I was I wasn't a bad kid. I was just a kid that didn't show up to class, you know, and I was right. a class clown, but everybody loved me, if that made sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So when he brings me into the office, I'm thinking I'm in trouble. You know, I'm like, oh, shoot, what did I do now? Um, and he gives me a, a paper and on this paper had a list of schools like universities mm -hmm. and I'm looking at these schools and I'm like Ohio State, Iowa State, I, uh, Illinois University, Illinois State, like a whole bunch of like D1 schools, a whole bunch of division two schools. And yeah. I'm like looking at this and I'm like, I know this isn't for basketball. What's what's this for? You know, he was like, these are the schools that you're not going to be able to get, go into because your grade point average is too too low and you got you score low on the ACTs. Um, and the purpose of that conversation was like, all right, we need to like, you have all the potential in the world to go to college. Maybe it's not for the sport that you want, but these are opportunities are that are afforded to you through track and field. And since you haven't been doing what you needed to do, you're gonna to have to take an alternative route. And I was just like, dang, man, why'd you have to tell me that? And he, he told me, you know, the reason you do, you want to know the reason why you didn't make your high school team, your basketball team. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I wasn't good enough, I guess. He was like, no, it's because you are a liability to the school because of your visual, your uh, visual impairment. And I was just like, damn, I was good yeah. enough. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was yeah. good enough yeah. this whole time, but I was a liability because one, I, I didn't like wearing sports goggles when yep. I really needed to. And then, you know, that, that was an issue, but I, you know, at that age, I'm just trying to fit in, you know, this is the most pivotal point in your life is high school at For that sure. point. You know what I'm saying? Trying to oh, yeah. fit in and be cool and not be looked at as anything other than your equal, your, your peers, you know? Mm -hmm. So that ended up happening and I had to go to a junior college, which probably was, the best like thing that ever happened to me because with going to Harper College, shout out to Harper College, yep. um, Renee Zellner changed my entire perspective on life. You know what I'm saying? She actually helped me and she was my college track coach uh, for my junior college. And she helped okay. me understand one, my disability a little bit more because she was a parent or she is a parent that has a child with a disability. So mm -hmm. like she can identify with me. She can understand, you know, what I was going through without me explaining what I was going through because she had a child, you know, with a with a learning disability, with autism and whatnot. So she helped yep. me understand my disability. She helped me understand my five senses and how yep. they work because she helped me learn more about the high jump and learn that it's more so of a feel than a visual sense. And since mm -hmm. I have a great sense of feel, I use that to my advantage when I like clear the bar. Cause I don't see the bar until like I'm two feet in front of it. Right. So when I have this long approach, I don't see the obstacle until like literally right before I jump. So okay. I have to literally feel my way through the entire approach and that's how she helped me understand the high jump. And that's how I excelled without using oh. any of my vision. She helped me understand the kinetic sense of the high jump. And I was just like, man, from there, I just excelled. So um, my second year, I ended up being a national champion in uh, Division Two, or not Division II, uh, junior college in the high jump. I set the school wow. record jumping six, 10 and three quarters. Um, my second year ever doing the high jump. Um, ultimately, 
I ended up getting a scholarship to a division two school, which happens okay. to be my mother's university where she graduated from and where she is a hall of fame member for basketball. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I had, I, it was, it was kind of funny because I have made this uh, list in high school of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to become. And everything was basketball oriented. I wanted to be in the Olympics for basketball, wanted to go yep. to the same university as my mom to play basketball, be in the hall of fame at the school for basketball. And all of this ends up happening, but for track and field, I'm not in the hall of fame for track and field just yet, but hopefully I get that. <laughs> uh, so shout out to Lewis university, Lewis university, Palma the flower flyers, make sure that you put me in the hall of fame someday soon, you know, um, <laughs> but I ended up going to Lewis university um, becoming a five time all American in the high jump, uh, national champion in the high jump, uh, setting another score record, uh, seven feet, three inches. Um, and now, uh, my, and now, you know, this whole time I'm thinking that, yeah, I'm about to go to the Olympics. Like, this is what I want to do. I know yep. that I have the capability of doing, I'm right there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm three oh, inches yeah. off from being on the Olympic team, you know? <laughs> wow. Uh, 2016, unfortunately, I ended up hurting myself and wasn't able to bounce back in time to make the Olympic trials. Uh, okay. So I had to sit that one out. And then I ended up getting a job to work in Rhode Island. But before that, I was introduced to Roderick Townsend, who introduced okay. me to the Paralympics. Now, uh. don't get me wrong. My coach, Renee Zellner, she had mentioned the Paralympics vaguely but I wasn't really paying attention to it because I had my eyes set on being an Olympian and I was just like the Paralympics isn't that like the Special Olympics <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't pay any attention to it you know I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I was just ignorant and naive to understand you know what the Paralympics were and I didn't take the mm -hmm. time out to learn so um, somehow some way the Paralympics was introduced to me my senior year of college again Okay. And so I was just like, you know what, let me actually, you know, figure what this is all about, because I took a chance in track and field, you know, by getting cut from the basketball team and trying something new. Let me, since this is the second time it came up, let me actually see what it's all about. So yeah. I was introduced to Roger Townsend, who is a Paralympian uh, world record holder in the T47 arm, uh, arm uh, disability classification. Um, yep. he, he was also a phenomenal high jumper, uh, phenomenal long jumper. He's just an overall phenomenal person, Roger Townsend. Yeah. And he's pretty much educating me on the, on the entire Paralympics and what they're all about and what they can offer and the, and the different athletes and the different types of classifications. So I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. man, this is cool. And he was like, you know what? I don't know much about your specific condition, but I know someone who does. Markeith Price, who is like my big brother, like he pretty much <laughs> put me under. I don't know if you know, do you know Markeith Price? I don't. I don't know him well. We actually, uh, but uh, um, I, I I know I know of Markeith. That's for sure. Yeah, but, uh, he's actually but, yeah, yeah, he's he's my roommate. He's in the next room. Ah, what do you know, man? Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah, so he took me under his ring, wing and pretty much showed me the ropes, showed me how okay. to get classified, what I need to do, what I need to know in order to be uh, part of the Paralympics. And from there, like me and him just grew a relationship where it's just like, he's forever teaching me things, you know what I'm saying? And I'm yep. always learning. And um, yeah, that's like my big brother. So that's you awesome, know, man. Yeah, he took me under the ropes in 2017. 2017, I made my debut in the Paralympics. Um, yep. went to London, broke yep. uh, four world records, or wow. I don't know how many world records in a high jump, but I broke <laughs> how many world records in a high jump uh, in London and ended up uh, meddling in the long jump, uh, oh. bronze in the long jump. And okay. I'm going to win gold. I'm going to win gold in 21. I'm, I guarantee it. I can <laughs> feel it in my fingers, man. I won I won bronze in the in the long jump 2017, yep. 2019 won silver, and it's All only right. right that I get gold in the long jump. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just it's just one more podium spot, man. That's, yeah, that's all you exactly. got, right? Come you on, know, the, the slow gradual build up, you know. For sure, for sure. 
dude that is dude that is awesome that's one heck of a i guess that's one heck of a story you you are talk about energy and, and passion and yeah. man you, you uh man like how do you how do you like do you just channel all that that passion and energy into your you know into your sporting career and like or like, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, you say Marquise is your roommate, man. Do, do man, do uh, do people ever tell you like, man, you're you're going too uh, you're a little too wound up, man? Like we gotta, you know, get yeah. you out and you know maybe get you get you running some sprints again or something to yeah. to, to get that energy out or you know yeah. Like, so so what what a, what is what is your your day to day you know training and lifestyle look like as a uh, you know as someone you know as a as a high jumper a long jumper um you know track and field athlete what what is that uh what does that day-to-day grind look like for you man honestly um to be honest it kind of transformed because now i live i live at the uh, chula vista elite training center um okay. out in california yep um and i moved out here in 2017 and just the transition from where I was in 2017, where I am now, is just remarkable. But to just say what my day to day is currently, you know, mm-hmm. I wake up um, around like 630 because I also uh, train athletes at San Diego State University uh, oh, for the okay. adaptive sports program. Oh, sweet. Um, with a kill whitehead, who is also a phenomenal person. Um a uh, former Paralympian and now director of San Diego State University Adaptive Sports. Um, and awesome. we're and I'm working with uh, two athletes. So we were doing morning workouts around like okay. 630. And then I would get back here and, um, you know, get breakfast, drink some tea. I also I also write books. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I actually came out with a book in November. Um, it's called The Guardians of Arisha. You can find it all over my Facebook and Instagram. Oh, awesome. and all that. Uh, but, you know, usually I wake up in the morning, train my athletes, you know, come up with different concepts with my book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do like a rehab, prehab, like workout thing before I actually start my workouts um, to heal my Achilles and, and the palms of my feet. Okay. And, uh, you know, listen to a lot of music, man. I'm, I'm a passionate guy, man, man. <laughs> like I, I get it from my mom, man. Like I just have a passion for life, man. Every day is a blessing, especially when you just don't know if you're gonna wake up and be able to see what you saw the day before. Because my unfortunately, my eye condition is progressive, so right. and I'm starting to see the changes as I get older. From when I was a kid, like I was able to catch footballs and do all these amazing things that you know I I didn't pay attention to my vision, but now you know I, I struggle with catching like footballs and hand-eye coordination is slowly slipping away. But yep. you know, I, I just, you know, just wake up, you know, talk to God and, you know, thank him for another opportunity to see and being sure. able to do what I love to do uh, with no problem. And, you know, and just go on with my day. I'm really, really chill. You know, it's really <laughs> too complex or anything, but, you know, I just, I just be out here, man. <laughs> dude that's that's so awesome yeah yes, so, so, some 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 stuff that um you know you 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 give a you know I, I love that you give so many shout outs to uh you know you know the team that, that has been around you and the people that have that have really helped you you know to elevate you know to to where you are now um you know if, if you could have i mean like i get i get the feeling i i uh, you know that if you could, you would have every single one of those people, um, you know, at, you know, cheering you on every step of the way in person. But, you know, if, if you could just have like one of those, you know, one of those people, you know, that have kind of helped you along the way or like, who, who is that biggest motivator for you that if, if you could have them, you know, right next to you before you, uh, you took off on your, on your high jump at the Paralympics or, you know, getting ready to go grab that, snag that gold medal in the, in, in the long jump. Uh, if you could have that one person who like, who is that person that would make sure that you had your, your best day in, in whatever event you were doing? 
Yeah. Wow. That's that's a difficult question because my entire team is full with like undisputed champions, you know. So absolutely like uh, to just pick one is pretty hard. But if I, <laughs> if I had one ticket and I had to give it to someone, it, it'd be no question. That it'd be my mom just because I know if I didn't give it to her, she'll probably beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have to say I would have to say my mom for sure. Like, um even though like like I like I mentioned earlier, like my entire my entire like support system is phenomenal, yep. man. Like absolutely like man, like it's incredible because nobody in my support system told me that I couldn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I yep. always said I always heard, yes, you can. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And absolutely. if I had any doubt, you know, it came from myself, you know what I'm saying? Inner doubt. Like yep. everybody around me sees that they believe I can fly you know what I'm saying like <laughs> but if there was any doubt in my mind it would come from myself you know we all have self-doubt and whatnot but you know it's great to always have someone to you know call when I can or when I need to to help me get that reinsurance and to to know that you know um, I'm doing the right thing and then obviously you know I always talk to God me and God are like best mm -hmm. friends so if I could have one ticket, I have God come down here and be like, "Hey, come watch me jump, man." You know, if I couldn't pick my mom, I'll pick him. You know, uh, that's awesome, man. Like, I love just it. Just going through what I've been through, like uh, the last three years, this transformation—I would like to call it. Um, yep. He's been with me every step of the way, and he has constantly reassured me on my journey as far as you're doing the right thing, and he's always given me, you know. Uh, answers to the questions that I have you know these these looming questions that's unanswered he gives me those answers so if I can give that one ticket if I couldn't give it to my mom I give it to God <laughs> I love that I love that man I love that so I mean you've all, I mean you've been uh you know you've been chasing the, the Paralympic dream you've been uh you know you know world you know world championship multi-time world championship medalist and and you know all this, all these great successes. Like, what, like, what, um, what does success look like to you? And, and like, do you have a, do you have a, a favorite, you know, event or sporting memory that kind of sticks out in your mind where, you know, everything just kind of clicked on that one day? Yeah, yeah. Um, success, man. That's that's it's funny because you know. Um, like I said, I keep talking about this transformation. Within this yep. transformation, uh, success began to look different to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, yep. To, in the sense of like, I have a newfound confidence where yep. now the success that I'm looking at is like, is big. You know, I want I wanted to do yep. something. I always wanted to be someone to be the one in something. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, like in my entire life, I always wanted to be the best athlete wherever I went. So, yep. you know, of course, like I want to be the first ever Paralympic athlete to win a gold medal at the Olympic Games because I know yeah. I can do it. You know what I'm saying? I know yeah, I can for do sure. it. everything is man, I know I can do it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, you know, um, and I remember, you know, maybe like a year back, yeah, maybe a year and a half back, I would say that and I would just say it like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be an Olympic gold medalist one day. But I wouldn't necessarily yeah. believe it. You know, it was yep. easy to say it, but it was twice, maybe 10 times harder to actually believe it. Yep. You know, but now, like, I believe it. When you ask me, like, yeah, it's cool to be a Paralympian and everything like that. And I hold that, like, proudly. Um, yeah. But I want to be able to show the world that, you know, even though I'm a Paralympian, you cannot and you will not put any limitation on what my ability can be, you know what I'm saying? And what I'm able to do because I'm able to jump higher than just a Paralympian and an Olympian, you know, I can, yeah. I can fly, you know, <laughs> and I'd um, say so, <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's what, and that's, that's what success means to me. Like it's not necessarily, you know, winning that gold medal at the Olympic games because I ultimately define what that gold medal is to me you know what i'm saying and awesome. um who knows what that looks like like i don't have like it'd be great don't get me wrong it'd be great oh, yeah. to be a gold medalist at the olympic games of course yep. 
But even if I become a gold medalist at the Olympic Games, that necessarily may not be what I consider the gold medal. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, in my heart, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like now, you know, getting out of the situation that I was in and what the sport put me through, you know what I'm saying? I'm already that gold medal winner, you know what I'm saying? Because I have to literally transform my mind from what I was accustomed to to fit where I was and to get out of where I was to become where I am today. So, you know, success, I think that's what success is really all about is that self-growth and acknowledging that self-growth. Dude, that's, that's awesome. I I love that. Uh, Dude, I I love that attitude and man, you just, you embody it. It's, it's, uh, man, it's, it's impressive to see, Um, you know, so, I mean, you, you talk about, you, you talk so much about, you know, that, that transformational growth and all that. I mean, and you've obviously had some, some pretty big, you know, times when you, you, you've struggled as well. Um, so t- tell, tell us a little bit about like, you know, how, like when you do struggle or when you have a, a rough day or a, a rough, uh, you know, a rough jump or, or anything, how, how do you, best bounce back from those setbacks and um that's that's a great question man because i tell you 2018 and 19 was the the dog years (laughs) oh yeah dog years of my track (laughs) career man nothing was going well um i don't know what was getting me out of bed i don't know i think i think part of it was fear of disappointing myself and disappointing my coaches and that's why I just kept on getting up and going to practice even though I knew my heart and mind wasn't in it those couple years um yep. but it was just that fear of just disappointment and yep. resentment that I knew I probably would face if I if I was to quit yep. um so I, I really I wanted because I knew you know at those point in times where I didn't want to like do the sport anymore I knew I still have more in me and I knew I had more to give. And if I can just change a few things, I know I can make it. I know I can make it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, uh, what, what just kept me going was just the possibility and just faith. And, you know, and obviously, you know, my relationship with God, you know, yep. even when I was feeling down and he, he let me feel those moments, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he let me feel those moments. And, oh yeah. But he was he was teaching me something. He he allowed me to learn something about myself because now going through those things, I feel invincible. Like I feel like I can't be touched with as far as my mental. Like I know how to get out of those mental hiccups where I do feel sad or if a competition doesn't go as well. Like I still I still have those moments of just like, dang, I wish I could. Like just last weekend. I competed and I had these high expectations. I wanted to jump a certain distance. I, I, yep. And it, the, this distance didn't have a number at all. It was just something, something far. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to jump something yep. far. I wanted to yeah. run something fast. And I, I performed well. In fact, I almost broke the world record in the long jump. My first meet doing the, doing the long jump last week. Okay. And I, I ran my PR in the hundred from college and I don't run. This Ooh. is like my first year running. And I lost sight of the circumstances leading up to that, that meet. You know, okay. I was so caught up with this, this, this expectation of jumping far and running really fast my first meet. But yeah. this was my first meet in two years. Right. Totally forgot that. Um, <laughs> the week of the track meet, was my first time on the runway for like a month and a half because I messed up my Achilles. Mm. I hadn't been sprinting for like two to three weeks because of my Achilles. And mm. you were, you came out there and you were able to one, do your event. You were able to run fast. It wasn't as fast as you wanted to, but you got to understand circumstances, the yep. things leading up to the meet, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And how far I jumped, you know, was, was, was good. And I hadn't jumped long jump in like two years. So you know, yeah. it's now you got you got the bases. Now you can move forward. Look at the think of the bigger picture. And, you know, now, you know, with the knowledge that I've gained through those experiences in my in my life, 
I'm a bigger picture type person. Now I'm more patient. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to jump eight meters <laughs> the first week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need to jump eight meters at trials. Yeah. I need to, you know, do these big accomplishments at the big meets. You know what I'm saying? Opposed Absolutely. to the first meet of the year. So absolutely I'm slowly man. learning that right now. <laughs> well that dude that's a that's a process that we that we all go through and i and i you know and you know it, it takes uh you know it takes people like yourself you know letting everyone you know letting everyone else know out there that hey look you know number one i mean you know i i think you would agree with me on this you know we, you know, we talk a lot about you know, belief. And, you know, I, I always tell people that the number one, you know, barrier to, you know, the reason why people don't succeed is because they don't believe it's possible. And, right. you know, and in order to, to get to that level of belief, you got to go through this process that you're talking about. And just, you know, it's just, you know, it's just so awesome, you know, you know, seeing, you know, listening to how, you know, you yourself as, you know, grew from, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a basketball kid into this, you know, this, this, you know, this incredible, you know, track athlete setting world records and, and all that. And you, and it's, and it's not, and it's not about the, you know, for you, it you know, it doesn't seem to be about the records itself. It, it's more about that, that journey and that belief. And I just think that's, that's really amazing, dude. And, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving listening to your story. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I really do. Oh, dude, I'm 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 loving it. Oh, man. So, what uh what we're going to do now is uh, I, I like to uh I like just uh, some some quick little like lightning round uh fun questions that yeah it just kind of it just kind of lets it, it's you know lightens the mood a little bit it lets the uh lets everyone out there get to get to know get to know your other uh, your fun side okay. a little bit so uh you know just okay. you know so uh we'll go ahead and uh get started so uh, do you have a, fo a favorite like post event you know or training treat man okay so as of late i've been going to the farmer's market every tuesday oh, okay. um, there's a farmer's market like right up the street from the center and i got this popcorn i'll show you this popcorn oh i swear this popcorn <laughs> good i swear this popcorn good i love this popcorn man i don't even they don't they're so good they don't even got a brand on it like that's how you oh, know it's wow. good is it like and, that fresh? Is it like that freshly popped like kettle corn? Like, is it kind of sweet or is like? Is uh, it it's just... the it's the it's the original butter and salt popcorn. Mm. You know that's that's the only. I don't I don't I'm not a fan of kettle corn, but I am a fan of caramel corn. I got caramel corn like right next to me too. I'm a popcorn fan. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. And I and I love chocolate too. You know, chocolate oh. Hershey's Hershey almond chocolate bars. <laughs> Fire. Fire, man. oh man making me oh, hungry man, again I love nerds 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 bro not 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 an everyday uh candy that you know people <laughs> think but man nerds love it <laughs> yeah man. love it candy. like love if i can eat candy for like lunch breakfast and dinner i would i think sometimes <laughs> i do <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you're uh, you're a big music fan. What's what's your favorite type of music? Or you got a favorite artist? I'm I'm an old school. I have an old soul, man. Oh. Like my music ranges from uh, Jimi Hendrix to the Isley Brothers to uh -huh. Odyssey to you know J Cole, a little bit of Drake. I'm not like a new type guy. I don't really like the new rap and hip hop. Yeah, yep, yep. I, I, don't get me wrong. I have a few songs, but a lot of my playlist is like old school music, like right. old school soul and hip hop and R and B. All right, man, I love that. I love that. All right, you a uh, you a dog or a cat person? Oh man, I was you know it's funny. I'm allergic to cats. Like oh. highly allergic. Like I, I man, my eyes get all red. I can't yep, yep, yep. 
So I love dogs. I love dogs. Okay. I was I, I was actually in the process of getting a guide dog, okay. but um that that fell through. A lot of stuff was uh, going with that, so I couldn't I couldn't pursue that journey. But I'm looking to get a guide dog, um probably after after uh, my track career. Awesome man, love it, love it. You uh coffee or tea? Tea, tea. I love. Awesome. I drink tea every morning. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. You, uh, you stay up, you a stay up late kind of guy or, you, you know, you like, uh, you like, or do you like getting up early? Man, I used to stay up all times of night, but you know, since yep. I'm 28, I'm getting older. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in bed at like 830, nine o'clock. <laughs> I hear you there, but man. I, I, hear you. I love waking up early now though. I don't know why, That's but awesome. like waking up and watching the sunrise is, is beautiful. It's refreshing. That's awesome, dude. Do you have a favorite, um, you know, what, what's your favorite non-sporting activity? Man. So like, like I've mentioned, I've, I've grown a new uh, hobby and that's writing books, writing stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, so like, like I mentioned, I, I wrote a stories, which is a, a, I wrote a book, which is a multi-series book um, and found like, like, crazy enjoyment from writing this book like I was having so much fun and writing the first one and uh that's that's the new thing that I do other than you know competing or whatnot I, I just be writing stuff. nice man I love it all right what one, one um one more one more kind of quick lightning round question um just because you said you were from Chicago I, I, I gotta ask okay okay thick or thin crust you got to go deep dish, man. Okay. You got to right. go deep dish. You got to go. Right. There's this place in San Diego. It's called Lefties. And okay. they have the most, like, closest pizza to Chicago-made pizza deep dish. And okay. I'm like, I always go to Lefties now. Like, if I'm getting pizza, it's from Lefties. I love it, man. Love it. Hopefully, no, hopefully I, they can watch this and they can hear hear that I'm shooting them, <laughs> shouting them out, and they can give me like a free slice. <laughs> Let's <laughs> use them North Park. <laughs> Any, anything for anything for a free slice of za, man. Anything for, for a free slice of za. Yeah, no, I uh, I, I love I love me some I love me some deep dish, but I also love me some thin crust. My uh my my family is uh is from the Chicago area, so we're uh we're big time Giordano. pizza snobs, so. <laughs> okay what's 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 your favorite pizza place i actually um you know in the in the chicago area my uh my favorite pizza place is actually a uh a little uh family-owned joint um in the suburbs um in the south suburbs called ed and joe's ed and um, joe's yeah so ed and joe's it's in uh it's in tinley park um so tinley the south park. suburbs of chicago yeah, uh, yeah but yeah man was- if you ever get if you ever get back there uh you know pop on down and but that's a uh, that that's a thin that's a thin crust. Uh, they're more known for their thin crust. But uh, but man, it's uh, you gotta got you gotta stray over to the other uh, the other side every once in a while, man. You know. Gotcha. No, I, I, if, if they're thin crust, like my I love Giordano's and Rosati's thin crust. Heck so yeah, I definitely could eat me some thin thin crust. Heck thin. yeah, man. All right, Isaac. Um, I just got I got one. I got one more question for you, uh, and it's something that I, I like to ask. Yes, sir. You know, every every athlete that um, that we bring on here, and and that is, how do you, you know, Isaac Jean Paul, how how do you want to be remembered? Man, oh, I love that question, man. I love that question. I want to be remembered as someone who accepted everyone for who they are, um, didn't cast any judgment from you know how you wear your clothes whatever you look like no judgment and a person that you know always tried his best to inspire people to be who they want to be opposed to always trying to fit this norm of you know what's being told to us whether it be your parents telling you you have to go to school like gotta get a college education that's the only way for you to you know, create a living or you have to do this, you have to do that. You know, I want people to understand that the most important thing in life is to embrace who you are. 
and yep. never sway from that. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully people understand that when, when I'm Wong and Kong, like I always want people to be themselves. Awesome, man. So, I love it. I love it. Well, yes. Isaac, thank you so very much for being, uh, for being a guest on the, on the blind spot. We really appreciate it, man. I, I, you know, I can't, I can't wait to see, you know, the rest of this year play out for you. Um, you know, and just the, the rest of your, your life and career. Um, so you guys, as always, thank you all for tuning into the blind spot where we talk with blind athletes, reaching excellence. I think you'd all agree with me that, you know, Isaac is a, uh, is a, is a clear, is a clear cut example of, you know, what you can, what you can accomplish when you put your mind to it. And, uh, and as always, everybody keep an eye on the, uh, keep an eye on the social media, keep an eye on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, Isaac, what is your, uh, what's your, uh, you know, what's your Instagram handle, your Facebook, all that. Give us uh, let us know how we can, uh, how we can keep track of you, how we can follow you. For sure. Um, my Instagram is IJP underscore 2016. Um, that's my personal Instagram. My author page for Instagram is the like T H E Isaac Jean Paul or shoot. No, it's the author, the author, Isaac Jean Paul is my, uh, other Instagram page. And then on Facebook is just my name, Isaac Charmon Jean Paul, John Paul. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Excellent. All right, guys, go give, uh, go give Isaac a, a follow, give him some likes, give him some, uh, give him some kudos and, yes. uh, and also keep an eye on, uh, on the USABA Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages, uh, as we are going to be dropping, uh, more and more content, uh, throughout this 45th year of our existence, uh, including our 45 for 45 series that you guys have been enjoying so much. Uh, next episode of that drops, uh, drops tomorrow. So keep an eye out on Facebook for that. And, uh, we will be back in uh, about two weeks with, uh, with our next guest. So stay tuned as well to, uh, to hear who we're going to be bringing on at that time. But until then, everybody keep it, you know, keep it real, stay safe out there and let's go. Yes, Team sir. USA. Thank you for having me, uh, Kyle. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Everyone have a great day.